Okay, yeah. So uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Jamia and also all the other uh, uh, organizers for for the invitation. Now, a little earlier today, we have heard uh, in uh, Julia's talk uh, uh, that uh, uh, Rydberg atoms are really uh, beautiful model systems to look at spin physics and look at uh, many body spins physics. And I guess my talk will go a little bit uh, uh, further into the same line. Namely, I want to talk about uh, nonlinear transport of uh, Rydberg excitations. Uh, but uh, before I do that, uh, let me. Uh, yep, no works. Uh, let me uh, give some thanks to the people who really did the work. So this is uh, my uh, PhD student Simon Ola, and uh, who did most of the work, and had a lot of uh, mostly uh, numerical support by uh, Max Kiefer, and we enjoyed. Uh, and conversations with David Petrosian, Hans Peter Büchler, and Antoine Brovers. Now, um, as I said, um, Rydberg atoms are really uh, perfect spins in the sense that uh, just by applying an, an external electromagnetic field, you can make uh, all sorts of single spin uh, rotations. The, uh, uh, the excitation or the, the, the interaction between two uh, Rydberg atoms, the van der Waals interaction between two Rydberg atoms, provides uh, a perfect easing type spin-spin coupling. And this uh, coupling is so strong that even if you put these two atoms uh, micrometers apart, the uh, uh, interaction strength is, is still quite sizable. Now, um, if you take as the states of your two spins, uh, of, of your spin, uh, two Rydberg states, then you uh, would immediately see that uh, you can also implement uh, an, an XY type coupling, where essentially <coughs> one um, uh, Rydberg atom uh, just uh, uh, flips into the uh, other Rydberg state emitting a long ra range photon and the second uh, Rydberg atom is absorbing it. So, so you get a, a, a XY coupling, which can actually be on the same uh, strengths than, than the uh, ZZ coupling. Now, what may uh, you what you may not know, or uh, may uh, which may not be so familiar to you, is if uh, we apply an external magnetic field and break by hand time reversal symmetry, then uh, these uh, hopping processes actually come along with a complex phase factor, and this complex phase factor can be uh, uh, adjusted by geometry or by by this magnetic field. And, and then in some sense, you get for free uh, a gauge field, which in other uh, uh, atomic physics realizations is a little bit uh, more difficult to come by. Now, even more importantly, uh, uh, this uh, process, this uh, uh, phase is uh, associated to the, to the tunneling, uh, can be made uh, dependent on the state of another atom. So it can be uh, made dependent on the spin orientation uh, of a third atom. And uh, this uh, is uh, what is called the density dependent uh, piles phase. And uh, let me go into that and tell you a little bit uh, how this comes about. Okay, so what is this uh, density dependent uh, piles phase? So let, let's suppose we take our uh, uh, atoms, uh, put them into uh, some uh, tweezer traps and arrange them uh, in, a lattice, uh, in a lattice structure which we, uh, uh, which we want. Now, since the, the relevant uh, uh, distances which we need for the Rydberg interactions are on a micrometer scale, this can be done uh, quite easily. Now, then uh, let's take an, uh, um, a Rydberg atom, an alkaline, uh, apply an external magnetic field to uh, break time reversal symmetry and also to shift around the levels. And then let's choose two um, uh, uh, sublevels, magnetic sublevels, as the two levels of our spin. Now let's take uh, uh, three of these atoms, say, in a triangle, and uh, 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 and uh, let's have a look first uh, for, for a, a direct transition between atom one and atom three. So atom one is uh, in the spin up state, atom three in the spin down state, and then now, of course, what can happen is just a simple uh, spin flip, so you can have a direct hopping. But now there is a second way where the excitation can go from atom one to atom three, and this is via atom two. Uh, if you displace uh, atom two in the plane of, uh, away from atom one and three, then there are matrix elements for the photon which you emit from the first atom to actually excite also the, uh, 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 the uh, transition from state zero to state plus. 
Um, well, uh, this transition is uh, detuned, so this uh, is only a virtual transition. And therefore, uh, you get only a second order process where the excitation hops via atom two into a two atom three. If you work out all the Klebsch-Gordon coefficients and the transition matrix elements, then you find that there is a phase factor associated to this process. And this phase factor basically is determined by geometry. So by the geometry, how you put the atoms in, in the plane perpendicular to the, uh, to the magnetic field. Now, even more importantly, is that this uh, process via atom two can obviously only happen if the atom uh, two is in the lower state. If, you are, uh, uh, if it's in the other spin state, then this process uh, is forbidden. And as a consequence, we have uh, a nonlinear uh, uh, hopping process uh, uh, with a phase which uh, can only happen if, if uh, the uh, intermediate uh, atom is in a, uh, the immediate spin is in a particular state. Okay, this actually has been observed in a, a very nice way in an experiment uh, in Antoine Brouet's group. Uh, and uh, we wrote uh, uh, FFX uh, uh, last year. So essentially for the atoms on such a triangle, the Hamiltonian is uh, just a, is a direct coupling and the mediated indirect coupling uh, depending on the uh, population of the, uh, of the intermediate state. And this has uh, uh, a piles phase. So now if uh, you just put a single excitation on this triangle, then obviously this, uh, um, you know, this uh, uh, nonlinear term here disappears. And then you see that there is a real a chiral transport of the excitation either clockwise or counterclockwise in this triangle, depending on whether you make the magnetic field uh, uh, positive uh, or negative. So this basically proves the existence of, of uh, this uh, uh, piles phase. Now, if you add a second excitation and then look uh, at the uh, transport of the whole, then you find uh, uh, then of course this term here is gone and also the chiral transport is gone. So this was a, a very nice, uh, beautiful proof that, that uh, these density dependent uh, piles phases can actually be realized in these Rydberg systems. Okay, so now the question I want to ask is if we take this uh, simple system and extend it, uh, what sort of interesting many body physics can we, uh, uh, can we, can we learn from that? And so the first thing I want to look at is actually, uh, I take a couple of these triangles, put them together to a zigzag ladder and uh, have a look at, at, uh, at the physics happening there. Okay, so this is my uh, 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 zigzag ladder. Uh, I, uh, there is a direct transport of the uh, uh, Rydberg excitations either along the two uh, subchains or between the two subchains. Uh, now, in addition, as I just said, there are these uh, second order processes. So there can be a second order process um, along the chain uh, via the other chain uh, in, 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 in the two direction, it actually picks up uh, an opposite phase. And there can be uh, uh, second order processes also connecting the two chains. And uh, there are two uh, uh, possible pathways now. Uh, the excitation can either go this way, so go uh, uh, clockwise, or it can go uh, uh, counterclockwise. And in both cases, it actually picks up uh, the an, an opposite uh, uh, phase here. Now, then there are a couple of other uh, uh, second order processes uh, uh, which you can, can think of. Also, basically all uh, 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 atoms you can reach by uh, two hopping processes from here uh, add up. And uh, the very last term uh, describes a density-density interaction, which is essentially the process when an excitation hops to a, another atom and comes back. That gives rise to an, uh, an AC star term. Now, uh, this uh, uh, Hamiltonian maybe it may look a little bit uh, horrible, but uh, you can easily see there, there are essentially three scales. There's a linear hopping, this is just the ordinary transport. Then there is uh, the nonlinear hopping, the mediated second order process uh, by a coupling constant G, which can actually become large. And then there is the, uh, the third term, which uh, uh, is the density density interaction. Well, now let's ask ourselves, what is the uh, phase diagram if we take uh, half a filling? So we, we fill our Rydberg systems uh, 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 half uh, with uh, excitations and they look at the ground state uh, uh, diagram. Then what we find is depending on these two parameters, the uh, single order hopping and the density-density interaction, there are uh, three phases. 
which are characterized by uh, different uh, uh, correlations. Now, uh, the first one down here is uh, trivial. This is just when the interactions uh, are all small, then we have basically just uh, 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 superfluid. And the second phase, which is also uh, relatively simple, is the one where you crank up the density-density interaction because then uh, you'll just end up in a density ordered state. Now you see here these little crosses, uh, they are actually uh, denoting uh, the peaks of uh, ground state of the so-called ground state fidelity. What the ground state fidelity tells you is uh, how much does a many body ground state change if I slightly modify one parameter. And whenever you see a peak in this uh, ground state fidelity, that is a good indication, it's not a proof, but it's a good indication that there is uh, actually a, a phase transition. So we see here, uh, 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 we can here, here see uh, four phases. So let's uh, uh, first look into the probably simple uh, situation. Namely, uh, let's uh, have a look when we increase the density-density interaction uh, uh, up here. Then uh, uh, in the case of uh, weak density-density interaction, -density we see uh, the, the density correlations are liquid-like as we would expect. And then if we increase and cross this uh, critical line, then the uh, uh, correlation become uh, um, uh, solid-like, so become like an, uh, an ordered state. And this uh, uh, feature here uh, that, that, is, that oscillates between uh, zero and maximum values is just because there are two uh, degenerate uh, configurations. Okay, so this is maybe not uh, so uh, interesting. What is more interesting is if you go in the other direction. And if uh, here I plotted the ground state fidelity for this cut, and you can immediately see that there are, that there are uh, three liquid phases. And what is uh, interesting to observe is uh, to look at, uh, at currents going along the two subchains. So if we, if we uh, uh, cr uh, increase this uh, second order uh, hopping strength, then what we observe that there is a, a current uh, is building up. Uh, it's, it's growing, it goes to a maximum and uh, comes back and changes sign. Now, the fact that it changes sign on, on, and that there is a current at all uh, is also uh, not uh, so surprising because if we write down the uh, uh, mean field uh, Hamiltonian of the system, then you see that, that there is just a simple uh, um, uh, next nearest neighbor hopping. And then there is uh, these uh, hopping along the lines, which has opposite uh, uh, piles phases. Uh, so therefore uh, it's like as acting a magnetic field uh, uh, in, this, uh, in this lattice. And this is the origin of these uh, two currents, which is not so uh, clear is why are there these uh, three phases? So why is there uh, uh, an intermediate phase uh, uh, popping up here? Well, the story gets even more interesting uh, if we uh, look not just at the average currents, but we look at the spatial resolved currents. Uh, again, uh, this increasing uh, strengths of the uh, second order hopping. Well, if the second order hopping is, is uh, uh, zero, then of course everything is trivial. If you uh, crank it up a little bit, you see this uh, two constant currents uh, go, uh, flowing along the edges of, of the chain. But then if you increase it further, then something else happens. Then these uh, currents actually break up and uh, you see that they are forming uh, 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 vortices or vortex uh, uh, lattice, oops, something is not showing here, but uh, so you see that there are local uh, uh, currents forming. And the question is, uh, what is uh, what is the reason for, for these uh, 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 current vortices? Well, if you take the uh, Hamiltonian, write the Hamiltonian in terms of uh, uh, Wigner-Jordan uh, fermions, then uh, we realize that all of the hopping processes uh, are uh, accompanied with uh, some uh, unitary link operators. Uh, these, and these unitary link operators, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the one which uh, connects a side J to a side J plus two, this is essentially along the two subchains. So either in the upper or in the lower part, this is just a, a constant uh, a term which we already have seen in the, in the mean field uh, Hamiltonian. But if you look at the other ones, then we see that there are additional uh, uh, unitary uh, uh, link operators uh, popping up, 
which depend on uh, density differences. So as soon as there are density modulations, we will essentially create a gauge field which changes the currents along uh, the, in, in, in the system. Now, um, in particular, if we uh, ask the question what the uh, total flux is, the total effective flux in, uh, uh, such, a, uh, uh, um, in, in, in such a loop, then uh, we see that uh, uh, in the case of large density-density interactions, uh, the, uh, these, uh, 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 these uh, flux actually forms an, an, um, an, an alternating uh, 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 sequence. So we have a staggered uh, effective magnetic field. And if you calculate the uh, staggered, uh, uh, the total staggered magnetic field, then you, then you see that, that it uh, grows and becomes uh, constant. Well, uh, the reason why this uh, staggered field shows up is uh, uh, in, in that case, uh, uh, be because we have density-density interactions, which drive the system into, uh, uh, into a density modulate, uh, modulation state. And therefore, uh, this uh, flux lattice, which we observe uh, here, is basically induced by, by density order. Four minutes, Michael. Yep. So but now you could ask the question, what happens if we artificially switch off this density density interactions? So what happens if eta is equal to zero? And then the surprising thing is that uh, we still observe uh, a staggered uh, uh, magnetic flux in, in, in this lattice. So this means that this uh, uh, gauge field is actually spontaneously created. And the reason for this spontaneous creation of the gauge field uh, is uh, uh, can be can be seen if you if you look at a, a, a simple variational Gutzwiller approach and calculate the uh, um, the, uh, the the ground state uh, energy, then uh, it turns out that uh, the generation of gauge fields, the emerging of these gauge fields, actually minimizes the energy, uh, uh, despite the fact that it forms uh, density waves. So here we see that the uh, uh, that the density dependent piles phases, which you can get in these Rydberg systems. Uh, can give rise to uh, in uh, spontaneous generation of, uh, of gauge fields. Now, let me switch uh, gears and uh, discuss a more uh, uh, complex uh, model. Uh, let's have a look at, at, um, at a Haldane model. So uh, if we put our Rydberg atoms in a 2D uh, honeycomb structure, then we see that uh, the uh, direct, that there are these direct hopping processes, and then there there are second order indirect uh, hopping processes. And these indirect uh, hopping processes pick up a phase, and this phase depends on whether the, uh, uh, the uh, transition uh, goes uh, in, a, in a, a clockwise or on a, a counterclockwise way. So, so if we start here, goes through uh, this lattice side and end up here, we pick up uh, a, a pile's phase e to the plus, two pi uh, over three times i. And if you do it in this way, uh, we get the opposite phase. And uh, so if you have only a single excitation, meaning that uh, we can ignore the uh, this uh, density terms here, this one and, and this one, then, uh, then uh, what we end up with is exactly the Haldane model. Uh, unfortunately for hardcore bosons, uh, so while the, uh, um, while the, um, uh, uh, single particle band structure is topological non-trivial, the many body uh, ground state is not because it's, it's hardcore bosons. Uh, but still we see that we have uh, 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 quite some interesting uh, effects basically uh, uh, for free in the system. Uh, now, um, let me again ask the question, what are the, uh, uh, what is a, a phase diagram? And let's fix in this case, the uh, density density interaction at equal, uh, eta equal to one, because that's the, the uh, natural uh, situation. Uh, then uh, we see here, uh, and, and this here is now plotted uh, uh, as a function of the inverse of the coupling strength. So here it's a very strong in, uh, uh, coupling and here is very weak coupling just because physically this corresponds to the detuning in a, a, a root back atom. So we again see a couple of peaks in this uh, ground state fidelity. So we see a couple of different phases. Now let's try to analyze what these phases actually are. Uh, so the first thing we looked at is the uh, uh, spin structure factor, 
uh, just to see whether we have any ordered phases. So what we see is uh, if you go uh, out here in this uh, phase one, where the inverse G is uh, very large, so G is very small, then we uh, see essentially only a single peak. So this is a trivial uh, uh, superfluid situation. If you go to the opposite case, where G is very large, we see a, a structure factor uh, which actually corresponds to uh, correspond to a, a 120 degree uh, 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 spin order. And I will come back to this uh, in a minute. And then uh, in, in, the, in the phase in between here, we basically see not much of a structure at all. And uh, this actually is the, the phase which we believe is the most interesting one. But let me first go to this uh, 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 phase with very large G. We should, we should somehow work up. Yep, I'll uh, need one memory. So you, you, uh, we can calculate the uh, as a spin order uh, uh, correlation, which basically uh, uh, asks for the correlations of the spins here in this red lattice. And you can clearly see that this has a very uh, large peak in, the, uh, in this area uh, of the, uh, uh, where G is uh, uh, large. So this is uh, really a 120 degrees spin order uh, phase. Now, uh, how about the, the phase in between? Well. Uh, what we looked is uh, uh, we, we took uh, uh, a torus configuration with randomly twisted boundary conditions, and uh, we calculated the overlap with the optimum ground state as a function of the energy of these states. And here, what you can see is that in this ordered phase, there are only very few states uh, which have large overlap with the uh, optimum ground state and still have uh, uh, the, the, the highest energy or the lowest energy, sorry. While here in this uh, 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 range, uh, there are very, very many configurations uh, which have little overlap with the, uh, with the optimum ground state and still have very low energy. So this is a hallmark of a, of a disordered phase. And finally, uh, we uh, also looked at uh, uh, the, the uh, spin chirality, uh, which we can uh, consider in two different uh, triangles. Uh, this is a blue triangle or this red triangle, depending on whether there is a uh, uh, Rydberg atom in between or not. And then again, you see that in this area uh, two, this phase two, there's a large spin chirality. So uh, although we cannot uh, say this for sure, because we don't have uh, all the, uh, um, uh, all the, the, the necessary uh, quantities to be sure that this is a spin liquid, we believe this is a good candidate of a chiral spin liquid. Okay, so with this, uh, let me just summarize. I hope I uh, con could convince you that uh, Rydberg excitation transport is uh, interesting because it gives rise to density dependent complex hopping, which has been experimentally verified for triangles uh, as a situation. And then I talked about the zigzag and the honeycomb lattice with a couple of uh, interesting uh, many body phases. What I did not talk about, but you can ask me questions later, is that using the same ingredients, you can uh, build a, a, a Z2 lattice gauge series, or you can uh, look at onion, uh, onion Hubbard models. Okay, so with this, I, I thank you and uh, open for questions.